So today we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. The church comes to help us with this season, this time. It's a time of preparation. The Jews were expecting a a Savior, a Messiah, because through the prophets, God had made a promise. And so what we see in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah is exactly this, a prophecy about the coming Savior, Messiah tells us that in days to come, all nations shall recognize the God of Israel as the true God. And so they'll desire to be instructed in his ways, to walk in his paths. It also says that this Messiah will come as judge between nations. And also he'll usher in a new heavens and a new earth, a time of peace, where there will no longer be war between the nations. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another. And so, partly because of these prophecies, the Jews say Christ can't be the Savior. He can't be the one that we've been waiting for. Because we see these prophecies have not been fulfilled. We still have wars between the nations. This time of peace hasn't come. And so they're still waiting for the Savior. The way the church understands these prophecies is that some prophecies are speaking about his first coming, the lamb brought to the slaughter. Other prophecies, such as this, are speaking about his second coming. And all of this comes to help us because it's important to know in what time we're living. Some people were born in the time before the first coming. We are those who are born after the first coming, but before the second coming. And so we live with this hope, this expectation, this desire. The church says, Maranatha, we desire the second coming. We desire him to come again. And so we have this delay. And we can ask ourselves, But the church has been talking about the second coming for 2,000 years. Why the delay? Well, the delay is for us. God is patient with us. He's giving us time. Time to convert. Jesus tells us in the gospel, as it was in the days of Noah, so will be at the coming of the Son of Man. And so we know in the times of Noah, people were living with perverse lives. They weren't really thinking about God. It was a time of iniquity. And so God comes to purify, to cleanse, to begin again, to start with the righteous man. And so it's a judgment, a purification, a cleansing. And it says that Some, they did not know. In the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. They didn't know. They didn't know that everything was going to be washed away. They didn't know this purification was so close. And so they lived sleeping, worried about things that were going to be washed away. Spending time, effort, energy for things that were in two days all going to be to disappear. Because they didn't know. Noah, on the other hand, he knew something was coming. So he was able to live in preparation. He was able to live in preparation for what was coming. And so he had a time to listen to God. He had a time to obey what God was saying. And it looked pretty foolish. It looked like he was just wasting his time. His time could have been better spent. What's he doing? Building an ark. Much better to enjoy life. But then when the waters came, it was too late to change. It was too late to begin to prepare. It was too late to change direction. And it became abundantly clear that Noah was right. That Noah was right to listen. Noah was right to obey. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. 
so it will be also at the coming of the Son of Man. And this is why this time comes to help us. Because no one knew. And so God's also letting us know what's coming. So that we don't live as if we didn't know. So that we don't live. But on the contrary, we have time to prepare. We have time to have our eyes on the future. So it will be also the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field. One will be taken, one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. And so two people working in the field, it seems like they're doing the same thing. Outwardly, it's exactly the same. But inwardly, it's not the same. One of them is thinking about eternal life. One of them is preparing for the world to come. One of them is living his life in preparation. And the other one, doing the same work in exactly the same place, is just completely sleeping through life. Worried, anxious, concerned about things that are passing away. That will no longer be in a short time. And so, because the church is letting us know, we can be like Noah. We can spend time. What It looks foolish, but to prepare the ark, to be inside the ark. For... So therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So if you knew that a thief was coming at 2.35 in the morning, you would be awake so that you'd be prepared. And so in the same way, we don't know. When will be the second coming? Similarly, we don't know the hour of our death, which is a coming of the Lord for each one of us. And so we should live in preparation, always awake, so that when the day comes, we're prepared. Because we've been expecting, we've been preparing, we've been awake. And so... The second reading, St. Paul is saying, Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced, the day is at hand. And so it's true. The day is closer now. Every day we come closer. And so let us throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy. And then it says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we can speak about three comings. The first coming, Jesus Christ came in simplicity. He came in poverty. He came in humility. The second coming, Jesus Christ will come again at the end of time. And then he'll come with power. Then he'll come with glory. Then he'll come as a judge. Which is why it's so important, this third coming, which is now, which is today. Jesus Christ comes to us through the word. Jesus Christ is coming to us in this Eucharist. Jesus Christ is coming to be born inside of us. And he comes in simplicity. He comes in poverty. He comes in humility. And if we welcome him now, if we receive him now, if we prepare a place for him to dwell in now, then we have nothing to be afraid of. On the contrary, we look forward to because we're already living with him. We're already dwelling with him. And so we'll recognize him when he comes again. And so we have this time of Advent. It's a time of preparation. And so we can ask ourselves, what can I do so that I'm like Noah? What can I do that I'm like the just one? And so the church sees the flood of Noah as a representation, as a prefiguration of baptism. It's in baptism that the sins were washed away. It's in baptism that there's a purification. There's a baptism that there's a new creation. And Jesus Christ is this new just man from which a new world order will be created 
And so we have this opportunity to receive the just one into our lives. He's the one that purifies us, that cleanses us of our sins so that we can live a life already. And so this peace that will come, we can experience already here. And so this kingdom of God, we can experience already here. This peace that the Messiah comes to bring, we can experience already here. And so it's for us to take advantage of this opportunity to prepare ourselves as we now pass to the Eucharist, where the Savior has come. This, the Messiah is here, and he's desiring to enter into us, to live in us. And so let us welcome him so that he can bring the new kingdom. He can bring the peace that only he comes to bring with us. And so we can experience already here, already now, the new heavens and the new earth, the time of peace that the Messiah comes to bring.